Have you ever thought about what you want your final words to be? Or about who you would want to speak those final words to? I have thought about it, and I have written a little note and put it in my wallet in case there ever comes a day when my wallet comes home, but I don't. That is a note to my family because I want, the, I want to choose the last words that they hear or read from me. Oh, I know. Would you... Try? Well, there's quite a bit of, of, of happenings up here. I don't know if you can hear the undercurrents online, but it just got a little crazy in here. Would you turn in your Bibles to John chapter 14? John chapter 14, verses 12 to 14. And we'll come back to that in just a minute. But I, I talked about that because Jesus' closest friend on earth was John. John, one of, his, one of his disciples, one of his 12 disciples. And John, in his biography of Jesus, in his gospel of Jesus, he gives us more of Jesus' final words than anybody else does. He devotes several chapters, I think it's like three or three and a half chapters, to Jesus' final words, his final prayers on earth. It's very powerful and very meaningful when you read John with that in mind. Oh, wow, okay, this is a look at what Jesus thought was the most important things he could be saying. It is not surprising that even Jesus, in his final words, talked a lot about heaven. And when people know that the end of life is approaching or that it could be, we tend to start thinking about heaven a little bit more. And Jesus talked about heaven, and, and he said in those last few chapters of John, listen, I'm going to heaven. So he's going first, but he said, I'm going to go, and I'm going to prepare a place for you to come with me. So Jesus was thinking about heaven for himself because he knew he was going to be there in just a few days. But he was also thinking about you and me being there with him. And in those last chapters of John, they, he, he, John wrote down a prayer that Jesus prayed in his last days. And he prayed, Father, I just want my friends, my disciples, my followers to see my glory that I had with you before the earth and just to be with you, to be with me there. Wow, it's a really beautiful and, and just a cool thing that Jesus was, was talking about and that he was envisioning and he was giving us just a, a, a window into his world and what we have to look forward to, which is heaven face to face with God. Wow, so great. Also in these chapters, Jesus prophesied over you. I don't know if you've ever thought about that, but we, we, we say Jesus was a prophet, he was a priest, he was a king. Well, prophets prophesy. And we have down, written down in this passage we're going to read today a prophecy that Jesus spoke over not just his uh, followers that were around him, but over all the followers that were to come, and that includes you and me. So in John 14, verses 12 to 14, Jesus said, I tell you the truth. So just in case you are wondering, Jesus, he, he adds this when he, he wants to emphasize it. I tell you the truth. Listen up, people. I tell you the truth. Anyone, somebody say anyone. 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 So not just the people around Jesus then, but anyone who believes in me will do. Somebody say, maybe, might, could, do. No, no, that's not what it said. He said, will do. So anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done. This is Jesus, God Almighty, fully God, fully man, talking. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done. And, as if that was not enough, and that's pretty awesome, and even greater works. Somebody say greater works. Greater works. This is Jesus' prophecy over us. He said, because I am going to be with the Father. Now, here's the context for this verse that we often quote out of context. You can ask for anything in my name, and I will do it so that, somebody say, so that, so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. 
Yes, ask me for anything in my name and will, and I will do it. So we sometimes get a little bit ahead of God and just go, I want this color of blue jeans. I'm asking for it in Jesus' name. Well, but Jesus said, but I'm, I'm giving you this promise so that the Son, Jesus, could bring glory to the Father. And the context is same works and greater things. That's, that should be our first priority, not simply just, Lord, would you just give me everything that I want, although I believe that he delights in that. But his emphasis here in this passage is, hey, listen, I want you to go do greater things. What you need, you need more faith? Ask me, I will give it to you. You need more discernment for what, how to pray in this situation? Ask me, I will give it to you so that you can do greater things than even I did because I had to cut my ministry short on earth to go to the Father. And he said, you're going to continue my ministry. Ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. I think that's pretty good news and pretty encouraging because we got a lot to do in Jesus' name. So he started by saying they will do the same works I did. So let's, let's, let's ask the, the question, what did Jesus do? What works did he do? What actions did he do? Well, in Luke chapter 4, Verses 18 to 19, right at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he quoted the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, and Jesus said, this is my mission statement. This is why I'm here. Luke 4, 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me with the anointing of the Messiah. The Messiah means the anointed one. He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, and that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. If you are waiting for the time of the Lord's favor, I just want you to know it is here. It is here. Jesus declared it starts now, or it, or it continues now, and he never said it stopped. We are living in the day of the Lord's favor. The Lord's favor is on your life. The Lord's blessing is on your life. Sometimes life is hard. And yes, it, it has been very hard for many of us. But even in that, you have the favor and the blessing of the Lord seeing you through, bringing you through to the other side. And it either gets better here or it gets better for eternity. And either way, you win. Either way, you're blessed. Even, either way, you're going someplace in God. Amen. So what did Jesus actually do to fulfill that mission statement? Well, the verses right before the Sermon on the Mount, which we've been talking about the Sermon on the Mount this year, right before that, Matthew, in his uh, uh, gospel, his biography of Jesus, he summed up Jesus' ministry like this. Matthew 4, 23, 24. Jesus traveled throughout the region of Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. Now, notice that Matthew said the, the, announcing the good news about the kingdom. Sometimes we kind of stop short and we think that Jesus' only message was about salvation. But really, Jesus more often talked about the kingdom of God. And he invited everybody. He said, the kingdom of God is here. It has it is, it is arrived and it is coming. It is now and not yet. There's more fullness to come. But Jesus said, it's here. It's here now. It's near you. Come and be a part of the kingdom of God. So Jesus was teaching in the synagogues. So that's explaining the word of God. He was announcing. He was preaching the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. News about him spread as far as Syria, it's a little ways away, and people soon began bringing to him all who were sick. And whatever their sickness or disease, or if they were demon-possessed or epileptic, epileptic or paralyzed, he healed them all. Now, sometimes we get stuck and we just go, I don't know if it's God's will. I prayed, this person get... Well, I can tell you this. It is God's will you're healed. It is. That is what he wants for every single person. He wants every person saved, participating in his kingdom, healed, loving God, loving others. We know what his will is. That is his will. So Jesus, just to recap here, Jesus had a fourfold ministry. And he did those four things 
over and over and over. And sometimes we think all he did was preach or all he did was talk, but that is not all Jesus did. He did four things, preaching, proclaiming the good news that the kingdom of God is here, inviting us to participate, teaching, which is explaining God's word, opening it up, helping us to understand how does that apply to life, what does God mean by that, what's behind that, healing, which is, which is restoring people to physical, emotional, spiritual health, mental health, and deliverance. Setting people free from the influence of evil spirits. Maybe that helps you as a definition of deliverance. Setting people free from the influence of evil spirits in your life. So for these past eight months in our church, ever since January, we've been talking about the Sermon on the Mount. It's just so full. And I sort of feel like I rushed through it. It's, it's so amazing. I took some long chunks that we could have, you know, broken down more. But uh, that, that was what we did. So eight months about what Jesus proclaimed and what he taught about the kingdom. But I want you to know that's not all of Jesus' ministry. His, he was just not a talker. He was a doer as well all right so he was he was going around healing everybody setting people free it was awesome so there's proclamation and demonstration and i don't have the, the verses to quote for you but but paul talks about that my preaching to you was not just with wise and persuasive words but it was with a demonstration of the spirit's power yeah. and that is what jesus did and that is what he is calling us as believers to do too and i believe that part of the reason why the crowd showed up for his proclamation was because of his demonstration. So when you see someone that you know has been crippled from birth, that is suddenly walking and praising God and taking up their mat and walking home, man, that makes you want to hear what this guy is going to say and teach. It's both. It's both. I love it. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, there's something astonishing that Jesus said. Uh, it, it, it is amazing, it's powerful, it's lofty that Jesus came and did all this, but we kind of go, yeah, but he's God. Well, in Matthew chapter 10, 1, this is what it says, Jesus called his 12 disciples together, and he gave them authority to cast out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease and illness. So Jesus did not just come to like minister for three years, you know, do a lot of really great, powerful things, give his life as a sacrifice for all of us, and then go away, and now it's all over. You can now be saved, and that's it. He began to start a, a worldwide movement, and he said, I want the, the Father's kingdom to come to the earth. And the way it's going to come to the earth is through my disciples, through the believers in Jesus. So he, he called the 12 and he said, I am giving you the authority to heal and cast out evil spirits, to rid people of the influence of demonic spirits. Well, as if that's not enough. Okay, we could go, okay, well, that's the apostles. Their names are on the 12 foundations of heaven and the new Jerusalem. Okay, so they're kind of special. Well, then in Luke chapter 10, verse 9, he chose 72 other disciples. He sent them out in pairs with this command, heal the sick and tell them the kingdom of God is near you now. So proclaim and demonstrate and uh, that's just a summary of what he said but we know there was more because he uh, when they got done going out these 72 people going out to heal and proclaim when they got done they come back and they're like jesus jesus it was so awesome people were healed and then they said and you're not going to believe this even the demons obeyed us when we used your name and we cast them out and we broke off their influence off of people's lives. So cool. The demons obey us when we use your name. And I have discovered this is true. God has been taking us through quite a journey over the past year. Wow. You might think that's enough. We're going to go on. Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Jesus said, Look, 
I have given you, plural, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. Authority. You're in charge in Jesus' name, not the enemy that is coming against you or someone in your life. So it has been said that authority is the legal right to do something. So a police officer's authority, the symbol of his authority or her authority, is a badge. And that a badge says, I have the authority to pull you over. I have the authority to make an arrest. I have the authority to tell you to stop something or do something. I have authority. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus said, but you're going to need something a little bit more than just authority. So he said, you will receive power. Someone say power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. It is kind of interesting that the Greek word for witnesses is martyrs. <laughs> wow. You will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So if the authority is the police officer's badge, his power or her power is the gun. It's like, I got the authority, and I'm going to back this up. No, you're stopping that crime right now. It's authority and power. It's the force that backs up the authority. So Jesus gave his disciples authority, legal right. You and I, as a follower of Jesus Christ, we have a legal right to speak to that sickness, get out. We speak to that body, be whole. In Jesus' name, we have legal authority to do that. And we have legal authority in Jesus to say to that demon, get out in Jesus' name. We have authority and we have power. The Holy Spirit is our power. He is the power that backs up that authority. And there are times when I've thought, and I've had a, a, really a fair number of opportunities to be praying for deliverance over this past year or so. And there are times when I've thought, man, is this, that, that's, that's all I got to do is just say it? Like, my words are not that great, but then I remembered this message, and this message was partly for me today. It's not about my words or your words. It's about the authority that Jesus Christ gave to his disciples and about the power of the Holy Spirit in me. So my words are just being obedient to how he said, to, what he said to do. But it's not the power in my words necessarily. It's a power in the authority Jesus gave me, his badge of authority and his power of his Holy Spirit. Now, we've talked about the 12 we talked about the 72, but then as the church spread, after Jesus died and rose again, in the book of Acts is a whole book, a section of the Bible that talks about what his followers went out and did in those, in those days and years that first of all, Jesus' uh, resurrection. So Acts chapter 5, verse 16, for example, crowds came from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed by evil spirits and they were a couple of them healed. Is that what it says? They were all healed. This sounds exactly like the same works that Jesus did. When Jesus had a proclamation and a demonstration, crowds came around, they brought their sick and their demon afflicted, and they were all set free and all healed. And that continued in the early church. We have very specific stories. The Bible, I mean, it's, there's only so much room in there, but very specific stories about Peter, Paul, Philip, Stephen uh, being, being in the Bible, uh, uh, being used by God in this way. And then just unnamed ones like what I just read about that just, uh, they just got, gathered together and the believers and the leaders prayed for people and they saw these amazing things happen. But these miraculous signs and wonders did not stop with the early church. There are different thoughts in the body of Christ. We are not cessationist here. We are not people who believe that God's power ceased a long time ago. We are people who believe God's power is still operating today. We still walk in authority today. We still have the power of the Holy Spirit today to do greater things than Jesus did he, as he prophesied over us 
In Mark chapter 6, verses 17 to 18, Jesus said, These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. He did not say, uh, with a time limit of 15 years or 30 years. He didn't say that. He said, these signs will accompany those who believe, uh, and they will cast out demons in my name, and they will speak in new languages. I'm going to skip down to the end of verse 18. They will be able to place their hands on the sick, and they will be healed. That is God's will for you and me as believers, to walk in authority and power. The, the bottom line of this message, if I could summarize it, it would be this way. Jesus has given you authority and power to continue his ministry today. And I believe that sometimes we don't see it because we don't believe it and we don't claim it, and we don't pray for it, and we don't step out and simply try it. Sometimes it, that's on us because I believe Jesus has given us the authority and the power to do those things. And oh, I, I believe that God has so much more he wants to do in us. We, you and I, we are called to continue Jesus' fourfold ministry. Amen. Same works and greater works. We are called to continue that and to bring the kingdom of God to every place we go. We're bringing light into every dark place that we go, preaching, teaching, healing, delivering. Jake Kale is an author and a pastor who, who came and uh, visited with us a couple months ago, and he, he wrote this down. I love this quote. Christianity without power does not exist in the New Testament. Wow. Christianity without power does not exist in the New Testament. Here's what the devil wants. The devil wants you sick, defeated, beaten down, bound up, tormented, distracted. That is what he wants. He wants an ineffective body of Christ. He does not want the kingdom of God to go forward in power and in expansion. But this is what God wants, his will. His will is he wants you well. He wants you living in victory and freedom. He wants you on mission for the kingdom of God. God wants you focused on loving God and loving others. We know his will. We know that's what he wants. As soon as Jesus came and walked, he took on flesh and bones. That's all he did. He just did those things everywhere he went. We know that's what he wants. It is interesting and a little sad that God's will is not automatically done in the earth. His will is not by default happening in every person's life. And one way we know that is because Jesus said, listen, I need you to pray, God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, your kingdom comes soon. Jesus was concerned about that because he knew that there's a lot of walls. Sin puts up a wall against God's kingdom and God's will. There's a lot of walls up against God's kingdom. And Jesus said, you need to pray that God's kingdom comes. And you know what? I pray this almost every day. Almost every day, the Lord's Prayer. And I, I am just, one of the things that I, I will sometimes kind of go down this path in my prayer, Lord, I want your kingdom First of all, because you are great, you are love, and wherever you are, it's awesome. But I know our world needs your kingdom. Our world is disordered. Our world is divided. Our world is bickering, fighting. We can't agree on anything. Our, our world is attacking each other. Our world is sick. I want your world in this world. It would be so much better. I'm praying your kingdom come. Amen? Your will be done because his will is amazing but it's not yet happening in every life on the earth. Jesus has given you authority and power to continue his ministry today. So how did Jesus heal? I don't know if you can find a passage, at least where it's written, that Jesus said, Father, I just pray that you would heal this person. And that's about the only way we pray. But it just kind of it catches my attention that Jesus prayed like this. Body, be healed in Jesus' name. That's how he prayed. Or he prayed, sickness, go. He said, ears, be opened. Eyes, be opened. 
sometimes accompanied by a strange prophetic act, like licking his thumb and putting on someone's eyes. But he spoke to the issue or he spoke to the person. He said, get up, take your mat and walk. He like spoke to the issue or the person. And I've been trying to pray that way a little bit more. Uh, in line with my Savior. I want to do the same works he did and even greater works than he did. He said, little girl, arise. When she, was, she had died, little girl, arise. Oh, so awesome. Jesus also spoke directly to demons. He said, come out of this man. Come out. He spoke directly to them. So here's our action step. Let's believe for everyone to be healed, everyone to be set free, that God's will would be done on earth. Let's continue the ministry of Jesus, the same things, greater things. Let's believe for, pray for, let's step out in faith for, let's try, let's practice. You know, as a dad and then now as a grandpa, it is so exciting when little kids take their first steps, they just try. We know where they're going. They're going to be running someday. But we see a first stumbling step, and we rejoice. We get out our phones. We take a bazillion pictures from every angle. We say, come here. This is so great. You're doing so good. And they take a barely a half a step and then fall on their face. And everyone's like, yes, that's so great. Why can't we be like that with our father? Why can't we say, Father, I don't know how to pray like that. I want to learn. Would you give me a sick person today, and I'm just going to go try it. And you try it. Nothing happens. You try it again. Nothing happens. You try it again. Like, let's try. Let's step out for it. Because one of these days, what's going to happen is God's going to say, okay, you really want this. God's kingdom is coming to this place. I hear that prayer. I hear that rep repetition. I hear that fervency. Yes. 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 At prayer gathering this last week, man, there's just something powerful. Last Wednesday night, oh my goodness. We just lifted up our voices for anointing. And we just prayed, oh, Father, give us that anointing, that, the, the anointing that Messiah walked in. Anointing to preach, teach, heal, and deliver. Give us that. Increase that anointing over our church. I, I just want to encourage you, man, come to prayer gathering Wednesday night, Sunday morning. You will get in a place where you're filled with faith, where you're hearing God's word taught, and where we pray together. Man, it is, it is faith inspiring. It is faith building. So I am praying for this personally. We prayed in prayer gathering. Last Thursday, uh, no, one, no one was around at a certain, a certain time, and I just was walking up and down these aisles. Oh, Lord God, come. Pour out your anointing on me. Pour out your anointing on this place. Pour out your anointing on every one of us that we would go to wherever you're sending us and bring your kingdom. Man, I am just believing for demonstration. Not just proclamation, but demonstration. Wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. What? He will renew your strength. So we talked about last Sunday. That's where you find power if you're weak. You wait on the Lord. You spend time, you invest time in praying, listening, reading his word, speaking it out loud. Wait on the Lord. Jesus showed us by his example waiting on the Lord. How many times you see in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, where Jesus goes and he is up all night praying. And then the next day he goes and does something powerful and amazing. Or, or uh, maybe he wasn't up all night, but uh, other times he's up super early. I guess he was a night person and a morning person. I don't know. Uh, but he would, he would be out super early to where people are like, where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? Oh, yeah, he's out by himself praying. And it was out of the intimacy he developed with the Father in those times that he ministered. It has been said, all ministry flows from intimacy. All ministry flows from intimacy. I want that intimacy for myself with God. And I want that for you as well. We, we already talked about uh, today and just briefly earlier in the service that this coming Wednesday night is our deliverance night. If you are hungry to see the power of God move, I want to encourage you to come. And we are going to be praying for a power demonstration in your life, in other people's life. It's a service. 
So there'll be worship, there'll be prayer, there'll be uh, group prayer, there'll be one-on-one prayer for deliverance. And I wanna just expand this one since we're talking about both today. If you need healing, come Wednesday night. Healing or deliverance, and sometimes they're related. (laughs) Especially if it's a chronic, a chronic illness or a chronic physical thing, sometimes they are related. Let's get you set free from the, the influence of a spirit of infirmity, a spirit of sickness. Let's get you set free from that or whatever it else is that you're feeling. Now, if you, if you need healing, you already know. I need healing. I went to the doctor. Or I need to go to the doctor. I need healing. I know that. Everyone's kind of aware if you need healing, but you may not be aware if you're suffering from other types of things that an evil spirit is behind it, influencing that in your life. Have, have you ever felt, I, I had a friend in college and he, and he said, and he should not have said this, but if you've ever seen the Flintstones, he said, I have the Schleprock curse. Have you ever seen the Flintstones back, back in the 60s? It was, uh, it was a previous century. Um, <laughs> There was one guy that always had bad luck, always. Everything, like, he would just always, the cloud, the, the rain would only fall on him. Out, no one else got, just whatever. He stubbed his toe, no one else did. And sometimes we don't realize that when there's stuff like that coming against you, it is the work of evil spirits, of, de- of demons, of the enemy trying to trip you up. Depression, bad habits, anxiety, chronic illness or injury, Lust that just won't quit. Jake Kale wrote that you might just need deliverance if you have unwittingly allowed the enemy entrance into your life through an open door, or if something has been done to you that opened a door in your life and and opened a door to the enemy's work or influence. If you struggle with ongoing sin, if you have suffered trauma at some point in your life, these can be open doors to the enemy. If you can't stop believing the enemy's lies about yourself, God, or others, yourself, God, or others, yourself, God, or others, his lies that just keep coming and everyone hates me, that is a lie of the enemy. Let me just say it. I love you. There. Neener, neener. It's not true that everybody hates you. It's not. God is for you. God loves you. That's the truth. But if you, if you just can't stop believing the enemy's lies about yourself, God, or others, it could be the work of evil spirits against you. If you have exposed yourself or you have been exposed to unholy things, such as pornography, horror movies, dark music, the occult, uh, perhaps you have opened a door or allowed a door to be open. Maybe at some point in your life you were part of a false religion or a cult. Or maybe you're withholding forgiveness because you've been hurt and hurt and hurt. Or maybe someone has spoken death over you or cursing over you. These are open doors to the enemy's work in your life. And I, I could list other things if you have um, taken stuff into your body that, that uh, is addictive. Th- those are open doors. So if you need healing or deliverance or if someone you know does, I want to invite you to the deliverance service this Wednesday. What, what would keep you away from that? I just can't even imagine what could be better than that. Maybe you don't need deliverance. Would you come and be our prayer covering and just be in the room praying that whole time? Uh, be holding out your hand if someone's being prayed for one-on-one. Be worshiping God. Be praying, Lord, move right now. May your kingdom come. Let, let's, as a church, come together and pray and seek God's power in our lives. I'm going to be fasting and praying. I've, I've had, uh, I've just kind of taken a, a, a new habit this year. On Wednesdays, I fast and pray. It's prayer day. And so I fast and pray until the, the prayer gathering. Uh, and then I usually eat afterwards. It, I invite you to, to fast and pray. Um, maybe, maybe you could just fast during lunch on Wednesdays. Great. We need it. Let's, we need prayer covering. We need, we need God's spirit to come in power. So Jesus has given you authority and power to continue his ministry today. Preaching, proclaiming, teaching, explaining the word of God, healing the sick, setting the captives free. Let's continue the ministry of Jesus, amen? That's how we are as a church, excuse me, that's how we are. We are about demonstration and proclamation, both. Let's do it, let's be bold, let's reach out, let's walk in that authority, amen? Amen, I want you to stand to your feet if you would, please. And I just want to pray over you. Let's pray. Online, would you pray with us too? Let's all pray together. Lord, we want more. 
We want to see your ministry continue in us, Lord God. We want to walk in your authority. We want to understand your authority and walk in it, Lord God, to exercise the legal right you have given us over the enemy and over sickness. Lord God, we want to see people set free. We want to see people healed, Lord. We, we want to walk in power. We, we want to see a demonstration of what you want to do. We say, come, kingdom of God be done will of God in each of those areas that we're praying about each of those things on our prayer list that person that needs healing I say come kingdom of God in that person's body be done will of God in that person's body Lord God work through us Lord God work through us do you want to see God's power flowing through your life could I just see your hand way up yes amen amen Lord you see our hands raised we're hungry for more Lord, baptize us afresh in your Holy Spirit until we literally overflow with your power, with your joy, with your faith, Lord God. And Lord, I pray that as we go off to Boeing or to work at school or at the store or in our shop or to, to minister to our kids at home, uh, to, uh, as we go out into our neighborhood to get the mail and we see our neighbor, Lord, I pray that you would go with us and everywhere we set our foot, we would be ready we would be watching for our opportunities and that you would do something powerful through us and that we would proclaim the kingdom of God is here. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. I want to invite you to one more thing. And I don't know if you've ever put your faith in Jesus, but I want to make sure that every time we proclaim, and I've been proclaiming today, every time we proclaim, I want to give you an invitation to get started in the kingdom of God. I declare to you today, the kingdom of God is here. I don't mean just, just right here. It is here on the earth. Bam. The kingdom of God is here. And you're invited to be a part. How do you get started? You turn from your sin. What's next, you guys? Turn your life over to Jesus and you let him, you let him what? I say this every Sunday. You've heard me say this like a thousand times. So, so you turn away from your what? You turn your life over to? And you let him? That's right. You now know how to lead someone to Jesus right there. That, that's all you do. That's, that's how you get started. And I want to lead you to Jesus today. Would you bow your heads one more time? And if today you would like to put your faith in Jesus, now not just to believe, but to become his apprentice, to actually enter the kingdom of God, if you want to do that today, would you just raise your hand in the room and you'll be saying to me, Pastor, pray for me. That's me today. And online, would you raise your hand to God? Lord, you see the hands raised. And I just want to lead you in a prayer. Would you just repeat after me and say it to God? Would you repeat after me? Dear Jesus, I invite you into my life. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and be your apprentice in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, we say welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Would you just let me know you prayed that prayer? And you could do that very, very simply by just texting the word RESTART to the phone number 97,000. And that'll, that, that will let me know, today I prayed that prayer. I put my faith in Jesus. And I just want to let you know, I'm super excited about the, the message series that starts next week. Uh, and I don't know if I've ever preached one just quite exactly like this, but I just want to talk about the beauty and the glory and all that God has in mind for the church, which yeah. is the body of Christ. It's going to be good. It's going to be so powerful. Excited. Yep, awesome. <laughs> we'll see you then. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Garen. And you know, that picture of just a baby taking its first steps and how we, we encourage that baby and God encourages us to step out in new levels of faith. That's so mind blowing to me. <laughs> that's so great. Thank you so much. Well, hey, if, um, if you're new with us, I just want to remind you, um, text GREET to 97000. Um, just helps us get, get connected with you and walk this journey with you. Um, if you're watching us online, would you hit that subscribe button? That's only so that more people can see this video, so more people can hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Everyone who's here in the building, or if you're online and you're within driving distance, we are having our barbecue in the park. It's right over there. Drive over that. It is free food. Go down. There's nothing stopping you. <laughs> I it's going to be an awesome time. I'll see you there, and I'll see you next Sunday. God bless.